If scientists invented a teleportation system but the death rate was 1 in 5 million would you use it? Why or why not? Yeah, without question. With odds like that, it's probably the safest mode of transportation you could find. Accidentally teleports to a house fire. 1 in 5 million? Yes, I absolutely would, those odds aren't that bad. I like those odds. It's only like 1,500 deaths across the planet, those are good odds. Sure. I live in London. I'm sure the death rate for just stepping outside of my house is worse than this. I completely missed the million on first glance of the title and was really worried about the state of London. I live in NYC and can certainly relate. Pretty sure the subway has the same death rate. Depends. What is the death like? If it's like Stephen King's The Jaunt, then hell no. Okay please tell the gist of it, I too want to be existentially terrified. It's longer than you think dad. That's better odds than flying in an airplane at 1 in 3 million. And considerably better odds than simply walking down the street or getting in a car. From what I can tell this scenario means an even safer method of transportation. I would pick it over all other methods. Pretty sure flying is a lot safer than that. There are almost 3 million airline passenger trips per day in the US alone. Last time I checked there had been zero deaths in US on commercial airlines in about 10 years, maybe closer to 15 years now? Global stats may bring that down a bit, but for travel on certified commercial airlines I believe it's more like 1 in 3 billion passenger trips. Still a better survival rate than all the other means of transportation. People are worried because the 1 in 5 million feels random. This question phrases the odds of dying as a roll the dice and you might die kind of thing while in the real world you're aware of your surroundings in real time. Using it 5 million times sounds tedious, I think I'll stick with toaster and bathtub. Even if you use it 5 million times you still have a 36.79% chance not to die. Yes, those are better odds than most transportation I think. But I would be doubtful of teleportation anyway, who says the person going in is the same as the one getting out? Would I be the man in the box or the prestige? It depends on which teleportation technique they are using. Molecules decomposing and recomposing or wormholes that could defy all laws of physics and be produced artificially by engineers. If I only used it to commute to slash from work over a 30-year career I'd have a cumulative 0.3% chance of it killing me. Hmm. Assuming I can't do anything to improve my personal odds like standing very still, or swatting any flies in my immediate vicinity right before transport. I still don't know. Let's try another perspective. There are 155M employed Americans today. So if ever American only uses the teleportation to commute to work then 70 people per day will die just commuting. NTSB says about 100 per day die in traffic accidents, all driving not just commuting, so the numbers are reasonably close. Now consider second order effects like, if everyone else used the teleportation, my commute would just be me in interstate shipping transportation, my individual chances of having a traffic accident go way down with fewer commuters on the highways. So the option A or B of driving or teleportation math starts to change in favor of driving. Assuming only organic matter and personal belongings, because modesty, can teleport and not large crates of oranges and Barbie dolls. Also figure that with a drastically reduced number of variables on the road would make self-driving vehicles an even better slash safer proposition. And my commute becomes an hour-long piece and quiet time to read or Netflix. I'm convincing myself to the no column here. So I'll just assume I keep finding reasons against the teleporter and decide against using the magic death trap. If I only used it to commute to slash from work over a 30-year career I'd have a cumulative 0.3% chance of it killing me. Hmm. This is all I needed. I can instantly get to wherever I need, and it's far less likely to kill me than any disease. Sign me up. Math checks out. The odds would be 1115000th, oh oh oh. 2 times per day 5 work days per week 52 weeks per year 30 years equals 0.3115%. There are 12.5 deaths per billion vehicle miles due to motor vehicles in the US. What we want to know is the average distance you have to cover when you get in the car before you achieve a 1 in 5 million chance of dying. The odds of dying while driving isn't linear. For example, if you drive 80 million miles, that would look like you have a 100% chance of dying and at 160 million miles you have a 200% chance of dying. That is obviously wrong. What we want is a probability distribution that gives you a cumulative probability of dying of 0% at 0 miles and 100% as you approach infinity miles. What we need is a Poisson exponential distribution. Exponential distributions work over continuous scales instead of discrete scales. 
This distribution follows the format. PMX equals 1 EXK. Where? PM is the probability of dying per commute. X is the distance traveled per commute. And K is the probability of dying every mile. 12.5 deaths, 100 million miles. So, after 50 miles, your probability of dying is. PM50 equals 1 E50 times 12.5100000000 equals 0.00000625. Or a 1 in 1,600,000 chance of dying. The probability of dying from the teleporter is a constant. PTX equals 1 death, 5 million commutes. As you can see it is independent from the distance driven. What we need to know is where the two probabilities are equal. PMX equals PTX. 1 EXK equals PTX. 1 pint X equals EXK. Lane 1 pint X equals XK. Lane 1 pint X slash K equals X. X equals 16.0000016 miles. You need to drive just over 16 miles before the teleporter becomes safer. Interestingly enough, the answer I got when I interpreted this as a linear distribution was 16 deaths per mile. So for small improbable values, you can interpret the distribution linearly. Yes, because I would be able to visit my so more often. Smile. Op teleports to his so's and his limp dead body just flops out the machine onto the floor. So, crying, he. He was the one. One in five mil is no problem. The thing they'd have to prove to me is that the me coming out is the me going in, not a copy, and that stream of consciousness continues. I know a copy would believe it was the original, but let me put it differently. Imagine I make an exact, down to the last quantum state, memory, everything, copy of you with the same process of teleportation, but the original is completely preserved. Now there are two of you. You and your copy. Now you are told, there can be only one, one of you gets a bullet in the brain. Ask yourself, is it irrelevant to you which of you dies? Would you go just throw a coin I don't care? The difference is, with teleportation, you know it's you, the original, getting that bullet. The proof by philosopher. Get a bunch of philosophers. Make a perfect, totally perfect, copy of each of them. Then, for each pair, do the following. Randomly give either the original or a copy a gun with a single bullet, and a coin. Then tell them, you can shoot yourself, you can shoot your copy, in both cases it will be totally painless. You can also use this coin to decide if you wish. If you decide not to do it, both will die, painlessly as well. Then see how many of them roll the coin, and how many of them shoot either themselves or their copy. What do you think will happen? What would you do? Note, I'm betting the guy with the gun shoots the other, whether he is a copy or the original. 